Hi, and uh, welcome back. Day four, much better today. Um, I have um, actually managed to buy a 7.2 meter sail because uh, although everyone's been saying you need tiny sails to get going and you know you don't need big sails, at the end of the day, if you're not going, you're not learning. So um, I took plunge, got myself a 7.2. Um, an RRD, it's only got six patterns, very soft, um, sort of freestyle thing. Um, yeah, anyway, got down the beach today, uh, it was about 10, 10 to 11 miles an hour. There was, you could feel there was some wind um, and it was, it was gradually building, so a bit of a sea breeze. So got myself out on the water um, and uh, as per the last video where I said pumping is the key, yeah, it is. And because I had the bigger sail today and there was a little bit more wind, there was something to pump against. So um, I had to get used to the sail, that was, that was the first thing. And uh, once I got myself um, the harness lines adjusted, boom height, stuff like that, um, I then was more confident to try and pump a bit harder. I uh, managed to get myself up and planing fairly quickly actually. Um, I say it was probably probably 12, maybe 13 miles an hour at this point. There was, there was the wind marks on the water that you could see. Got myself planing, but kept dropping off the plane because it was a bit gusty, but um, it was nice, it was comfortable. And uh, again, I could feel that the board was, was certainly lifting from under my feet uh, rather than like an older style board where it, it comes up on top of the water and planes. Um, kept myself uh, kept myself going and uh, the wind gradually increased a little bit more probably up to about 14 15 miles an hour and now I was quite comfortable hooking in and, and actually feeling the board wanting to sort of plane so two good pumps board planing happy days so now was the time to try and get foiling so um, I got myself up and um, as I said last week, I've decided not to go with uh, a rear foot strap for the moment, just so I've got a position to, I can find out where it's gonna be. Put my foot on the rail, nothing happened. Um, started to uh, push a little bit on the towel, nothing happened. Looked down and my foot was actually quite uh, far forward, so I put my foot a bit further back, um, probably to where the fullest the full position of the rear foot strap would be and the nose came up and it just came up and it up and up and then it flipped me off. Um, the problem was is that I went into windsurfing mode as I as I picked up speed um, obviously I'm I'm hanging on the sail and I've started to plane and I've actually started to ride the rail. As I came up the speed increased so I wanted to like a windsurfer load the fin of course I loaded the fin which is the foil which was all on my back foot the foil obviously got working and up it came and it came up and up and up and then it railed and it kicked me in um, full-on dismount uh, board completely out of the water uh, probably doing about 15 20 miles an hour no problem uh, water started set back picked up, um, immediately picked up a little tiny swell, I'm only talking two to three feet, but it was enough to just get me going. One pump, planing again. Uh, again, tried to uh, find where the foot, the, my foot position needed to be. Um, ended up putting my foot on the outside of the rail, um, pushing sideways rather than down, and, and I went windsurfing mode again, so I've, ended up uh, again the nose lifted and it flicked me off so um, I've now got that realization that once the board planes and it is working the, the foil the board doesn't exist anymore you're, you're, you're just you could stand on a piece of plywood it, it doesn't matter you, the board is, has done its job it's got you planing it's got the speed the foil is now working so what you've now got to remember is is that the board doesn't exist you're you're controlling this thing and this thing works with pitch roll your so i uh got the board planing and i actually unhooked i found it slightly easier because um you, by leaning out i was i was sheeting in which, which is natural so i actually unhooked boards was was probably only an inch or so out of the water but and i was going quite well so I put my foot back and I stood upright 
and thought I need to keep the board down and keep it flat and then I just moved my foot back about a centimeter at a time and just pushed not a lot happened not a lot happened until I got to where the foot strap would be in the middle position at the back and the nose started to rise um, I immediately then pushed with my uh, front foot and it's a really odd position to be in it's uh, you, you feel you feel like you want to be on your back foot but you're not you, you're on your front and you're leaning your shoulders forward which if you leaned your shoulders forward normally would engage the harness lines which would sheet the sail in which would load your back foot and, and off you go um, the way I can describe it is extreme upwind sailing on a traditional board you're you've come into really really fast speed you've carved upwind as hard as you can you're now leaning forward as much as you possibly can to to keep the board speed up and sheet it in but not sheeting in you're loading your front foot so anyway i did that and the board would rise slightly and it would go down and it would rise slightly and go down and and, and it was a, a nice constant pressure on the back foot would then allow the board to then start to rise and as the board would then come up, um, you then, using your shoulders forward and back and your waist, you're then loading your foot. You, you don't really push on your feet, you just load. Um, and you've got to get out of your mind that it, is, it isn't the board anymore. You're not controlling the board. You're, you're, you're controlling this and everything you're trying to do is control this. Um, personally, I did I did find it easier to be unhooked while I was doing this, and there is there is no pressure at all. Once you're actually up and running, um, your your the the pull on the sail is is, is negligible. Another thing as well that uh, someone mentioned to me, and and I did try, and it does seem to make make sense, is that when you're getting going and you're pumping, you're pumping the board and and the fin and and everything and you're needing quite a lot of power in order to to get yourself going so when you actually do come up and you start to foil um the, the there is a lot less drag and as a result of that because there's a lot less drag you've actually um changed the angle of attack on your sail so someone said actually once you actually get up and running you need to sheet out and it actually does work once you've got up if you stay sheeted in you're actually over sheeted which is putting too much power down your back foot plus also the sail is, is slightly stalled so by sheeting out you get a better angle of attack and and there was an, 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 a marked increase in speed but there was very little pull so that was another thing once up on the foil sheet out make a conscious effort to sheet out um, yeah, I uh, got, got myself up and running, good uh, few runs, a couple of hundred meters each time, just gently trying to do it. And then um, I got one run, which was probably three, four hundred meters and, and just up. I don't know how high I got. I felt like I was, um, you know, I was off the water, whether I was at the absolute fullest, I don't know. Um, I, I kept going and um, yeah there was there was I wasn't hooked in I was just and there is very little pull on the arm so yeah I, I think each time you get up you are now learning how to fly this so the more times you can get up the more times there are to learn this this is the thing that you're learning I also noticed that as I did more, I actually was able to get planing quicker. I've now got the idea of where the, the right place to put this is to pump it. You do need something to pump against, but it is quite, um, it's quite rewarding when you get it. Um, and uh, unfortunately the tide went out and I ran out of water and the wind got even stronger and I just couldn't get going. I just didn't have enough water, so very frustrating. Um, but I'm up. And uh, unfortunately, I didn't get any film because I thought I'm going to get out on the water. I'll have a bit of a go. I'm going to come back and do some adjustments and I'll get the camera. Uh, but me being selfish, I just stayed out there. So I didn't get any film of the day. Um, but yeah, um, the next time I will definitely get some film. And um, what I'll do is um, I'm going to show you a couple of little things now that I've um, learned that, uh, that might help you. Um, I'm going to take this apart now. This is all being greased up, so it's um, going to be stored. Um, but uh, yeah, a couple of little things now, and uh, yeah, thanks for watching. See you soon. Okay, uh, one of the things I wanted to show you was uh, today I had the fin box 
uh, the base right at the very front um, which is what I've been recommended actually by the Nash website um, I was originally told to keep it right at the back but they've said for heavier riders and beginners keep it right at the front um, you get four of these these are your fin box screws um, they're an absolute pain they want to lose themselves all the time so what I would suggest is if you get yourself a little uh, nylon bag little drawstring bag and uh, attach it to the zipper of your uh, foil cover and that way whenever you take it off you just put them in there because you only get a four of them you lose them and you're screwed um, the other thing is, is getting these on is actually quite difficult uh, quite difficult to load to um, actually line them up because they're not very long so just stand by so one of the things I've learned to do is um, what I found helps me is obviously put your front one right up front and that's going to be in the right position but when it comes to doing your rear one and remember that when you come to do this you will have all of your foil so you can't actually get to it that easy so what I've learned to do is if you get yourself a little drill bit or something like that you can go down get that into position and then when you drop your screw in it should go in nice and easy and there you go and then with this one the same move it along and then you can line up the screw that's bitten nicely so because once you've got your entire mast on it's actually quite difficult to move this around so um, that's that just helps move it through like so and the other thing as well is uh, marine grease um, I've put a nice layer of marine grease on anywhere that the metal touches metal um, because if you get aluminium touching aluminium and it scrapes the anodizing off and it uh, comes in contact it will actually start to corrode and you don't want that so I've just put marine grease over absolutely everything and that helps it um, and so like I said on the Nash website it says for heavier riders and beginners all the way to the front and then I guess as you get better move it all the way back um, I'm going to put the foot straps on now for the back because um, I do feel that um, now I know where my sweet spot is um, I'm gonna put them on but if I move this I'm gonna have to move my foot straps as well so um, I'll go through that a little bit more on the next one but uh, yeah that's hopefully something that will help you out because it's an absolute pain and you can see the damage I've done by trying to put this on and move it around and it falls over and it does a lot of damage so get yourself a, a little anything really draw a bit a little screwdriver put it through the hole line it up and you can see they just drop in